this is Sam, and today I'm going to be doing a little lesson on hybridization. So we're going to start with um, our electron configuration for carbon. Today I had a question from Kenny about um, why do we draw carbon in its seemingly excited state. So real quick, we'll title this note hybridization. Excuse my, ooh, my really horrible handwriting. Um, so if we draw the electron configuration for it, we know, hold on, let me draw our little lines right here. So we have the 1s orbital, we have the 2s orbital, and the 2p's. You know that six electrons can fit in the p orbital. So, well, the p orbital actually has kind of like three suborbitals, the px, the py, and the pz. That's not super important, just know that it's three lines for the p, um, and that there's three subsets. So if we start drawing, we know that the 1s orbital, based on our configuration, is full. And then if we add it based on the basic rules of electron um, configuration, we'll add two orbitals, or two electrons, to the 2s orbital, and then we would add one, two electrons to the 2p orbital. So you see that we only have two unpaired electrons, which would imply that carbon, there are little Lewis dot structure, can only bond with two things. We know that this is not true, and that instead it actually does four bonds. And if we look, we see the four bonds that we can draw. So something has to explain this, and that's where hybridization comes in. Hybridization. <laughs> My roommate's laughing at me. Um, so hybridization is when the 2s, or the s in general, so let's just erase that too. Whew, that's nice. Um, the s and the p orbitals, um, they'll merge into one orbital. So if we kind of redraw what it would look like, um, we would actually have the 1s would still have two electrons, one up, one down, due to the Pauli exclusion principle. Um, and then the 2s and the 2p orbitals would actually each get one electron. So this explains why carbon makes four bonds instead of seemingly two. So if we look at methane, methane and um, methane is going to be kind of our prime example. So I'm going to draw methane. Um, keep in mind that we have a tetrahedral shape, which means that we basically have kind of like a, like a bar stool. We have three things pointing down, three little hydrogens pointing down. It's sort of like a bar stool configuration. And when you get, if you get up into chemistry and you major in it, and you decide to take inorganic, they actually call it when something has this configuration and then something crazy on top, they call it the bar stool configuration. It's pretty yeah, go chemistry. So, um, but you'll see that. And keep in mind when we draw organic molecules that they are in 3D space, not just in 2D. I talked about that a little in the last, in the VFDPR video I did. So, that's sort of going to be our thing. So, you know, that each, um, each hydrogen will come in, and I'm going to change the color of my pen to show this. Uh, we're going to go to pen settings, and how about purple? Purple sounds good. The hydrogens will each donate one of these purple electrons to the um, configuration, which will then give you your full valence and octet rule satisfied, everything you need. So in hybridization, there are three options. And I'm going to change pen colors again to sort of separate everything. How about green? OK. Um, there are three options three options. We have, well, it's sort of, there's different types of hybridization. So there's sp3, 
Ooh, that's not what I wanted to do. SP3, which S and all three P orbitals merge. We have SP2, where S and two P orbitals merge. And we have SP, where S and only one P orbital merges. So in problems, you'll often be asked to classify the bonds in carbon or in nitrogen with a certain, um, with what kind of hybridization do they show? Is it an SP3, is it SP2, or is it SP hybridized? Um, so in our first, we'll uh, actually do go through traits of these. Um, you can actually kind of tell by the shape, and I'll teach you kind of my little trick that got me through OCHEM for how to show hybridization. Um, hybridization is actually something, um, it's not completely limited to it, but um, you'll mainly see it in your organic subjects. Um, and your stuff with your like covalent bondings um, is where you see hybridization. So, give me a quick second. Okay, so SP3, how to tell. How to tell. If this sounds a little off, um, I'm working on that. So let's change the color again. How about a nice blue? Oh, was that what we were using before? Yeah, let's go with pink. Yeah, go pink. Um, it's my favorite color. You can ask my little brother. He's in physics. His name's Pete. Go see them. Um, SP3 will typically be tetra ooh, tetrahedral. So you'll see four bonds, but keep in mind that you can still get um, electron pairs sort of count as bonds. Um, it's a filled. Um, it's a it's a filled orbital when you have a lone pair. They're just too happy to bond. So I'll show you an example. So I'm gonna say or lone pair. All right, so the token example for a, an sp3 hybridized uh, molecule is methane. It's like the big one, okay? And the way that I kind of do this is when I see a molecule, I'll go around and go S, P, three. So, and it doesn't it doesn't matter. It isn't like this is the S, this one is in the S, because it's not really in the S orbital. It's actually in a mixture of both. Um, if you guys have questions about the orbitals and how they look, and what they what they really are, I can try to answer that. Um, yeah. It's kind of a, it's kind of a, it's a weird subject, but it makes more sense once you, if it seems fuzzy now and you feel like chemistry sucks because it seems fuzzy now, just keep, just hang in there. Cause I know it sounds worse. It sounds weird, but like the higher you get, the more sense this makes. This made no sense to me when I was in high school. I was like, that's the dumbest thing ever. It didn't even make sense to me when I was a sophomore taking OCHEM. But finally I, uh, I took an organic and it really helped. So if you're, if you're in there for the long haul and if it seems fuzzy now, just wait until you get to like quantum. It'll make so much more sense. And this is running long. I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll keep going. So anyway, this is your token SP3. You'll see three bonds. It has a tetrahedral shape, 109 degrees, 109.5. You can pr prove it with trig um, right there. Typical tetra tetrahedral molecule. Another place you'll see it, um, kind of the tricky one that they like to throw at you is um, is ammonia. So ammonia has, if you think about it, sort of the tetrahedral shape, if you count the, the, uh, the lone pair is sort of its own deal. And so, same way, S, P, 3. Cool. That's how I do it. That's my trick. Uh, I just sort of count it. 